uh, this is Misty. I'm going over unit two, uh, unit two test review. Most of you were in the main room with Mr. K going over it. So if you went over number one to number, I think 10, you guys can skip through the video so that you guys can find um, where you left off if you still struggle with, with the concept. All right, so for the first one, so I'm basically I'm gonna go over how to do it using Desmos, okay? Uh, you can completely factor this, uh, this the method we, we showed you where you multiply number one times number two gives you the last number, right? Which is negative 12. And then number one plus number two would give you the middle number, which is B, which is one. So you can say, okay, I know uh, and then you have to go to about the net, the factors of negative 12. I need the larger number to be one, to be positive. So um, when I subtract them, I'll get a one. So I'll make sure my larger number is uh, negative, positive. So 12 times negative one, uh, six times negative two, and then four times negative three, right? So here is our factor, four and negative three. You can do it that way. Or you can just come here to Desmos and graph it, right? You have x squared, x squared uh, plus, plus x minus 12. All right, so now when you graph this equation, you'll see your solutions. One is x equals to negative four, right? I cut here, x equals to negative four. And the other one is x equals to positive three. Okay, so now if you guys remember, we wanted to uh, make it look like this, right? So we have to do make it equal to zero, so I will do plus four to both sides. So this is gonna be x plus four equals to zero, and then minus three from both sides. This will give you x minus three equals to zero. So you can easily pick the right answer, because definitely you know it's not C or D, right? But where's the plus going? To determine that, you will you will solve it like this. I know I'm sure that's those of you who are in class, you've heard Mr. Quartin going over this this way. All right, as number one, number two says, which is the factor form of x squared minus 18x plus 81, right? So you can kind of see this is a perfect square, so kind of leads you, but let's just do it here. Oh, I should have just kept the x squared, so I'll do x squared, right, uh, put minus 18 x and then plus 81 okay so you can let's drag it a little bit here so you can see the solution is that over here which is 9 right so but this is an x squared right so it's going to be x, uh, x is going to equal to 9 so I have to do minus nine from both sides. So X minus nine is gonna equal to zero. But you know for sure, this by itself is not gonna give you this, right? So we have to double it. We have to do square. So that's what's gonna be the answer, okay? All right, number three, which is one of the factor X squared minus two X. So let's come here and delete this is negative 2x, right? Minus 2x minus 15. Okay, so it's asking you for one of the factor. So obviously when you have graph, you will always have two solutions, but in this case we're only looking for one. So one of the solution is here where x is negative 3. x equals negative 3. And then the other solution is here, which is x equals to 5. So don't rush and just try to pick, you know, one of them, right? You know definitely it's not C or D, but is it X minus 3 or is it X minus 5? So let's solve it. This is plus 3 to both sides, right? 
So I have x plus 3 equals to 0. This is minus 5 from both sides. So I have x minus 5 equals to 0. So which one would you pick? Is it x minus 3 or x minus 5? You can see it right here, right? Good job. All right, next is number 4. So the area of a rectangle is represented by the expression 2x squared plus 5x plus 2, which is equivalent to the expression of this area. Let's do it. This is, you know, factoring in a different uh, way. So we'll just do 2x squared, 2x squared, uh, plus 5x, plus 5x, plus 2, Oh, oh, so plus 5x plus 2. Okay, so you can see that I have a factor here which is x equals negative 2. And then the other one is x equals negative 0 0.5 negative 0 0.5, right? So I want to know what is this, the, so this is negative 0 0.5. I mean, you can kind of guess it, right? No, not guess it, but common sense. But let's say you didn't know, right? So what is that in, in fraction? So I want to know what is negative 0 0.5 as a fraction, right? See what it gives me? So all I had to do is click on this uh, tab. It gave me, oh, that's going to be negative 1 over 2, right? So I have x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1 half, right? So for this part, it's easy. All I have to do is plus 2 plus 2, right? So x plus 2. So I look for the one that has x plus 2. This doesn't have it. This doesn't have it. So it's either V or D. But now I need to determine what this one is. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply this side by positive 2 and this side by positive 2. Now I'll end up with 2x equals to negative 1. Then I will do plus 2 plus 2. So I'm going to have 2x. No, plus 1, I'm sorry. Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. That's the other factor, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1, and then 2x plus 2, so indeed. All right, number 5, when completing the factor 3x squared plus 30x plus 72 is equ equivalent to what, right? That's the first. So, the, so the, all of them you can see as a factor of 3. That means that's the GCF, right? So I can take 3 out, right, and then factor it. So that's one way of doing it. So I will end up with x squared plus 10 plus, uh, what is 72 divided by 3? 72 divided by 3. 24, right? 24. So that's then I could just come here and just put that in there. So I'll just put x squared plus 10 plus 10 x, right? Sorry, I forgot the x plus 24. This is x is right here. So you can say x squared, the factors are x equals negative 6, and then the other one is x equals negative 4. Okay, so, you know, b cannot be it or c cannot be it. So it's going to be, is it x minus 6 or is it x plus 6? So remember, we, ha we haven't solved uh, or set the x equal to 0 yet, right? So I have to do plus 6 to both sides. Then this would be x plus 6 equals to 0, plus 4 from both sides. So this would be x plus 4 equals to 0. Okay, that is one way. All right, number 6, What? which is the factor of 6x squared minus 30 plus 24? 
and it seems like I can still factor six out the, as a GCF, right? Because all of them are divisible, so I, I'll take six out. This is five X and 24 divided by six is I believe four, yeah, four, right? Then I could come here and put uh, my factor, which is X squared minus 5x, 5x plus 4, all right? So x equals 1, no, oh, sorry, <laughs> 1, right? And then x equals 4, right? So I'll do minus 1 minus 1, x minus 1 equals to 0, minus 4 minus 4, x minus 4 equals to 0, right? So which, which are your factor? x minus 1. So it's asking which is a factor, not both, but one of the factor. All right, the number 7. All right, number 7 is which is the discriminant, right? Then how can you describe it, right? So remember when the discriminant is positive, when D equals to positive number, when D equals to negative number, and then when D equals to zero, right? That's, those are the three options. Uh, let me see if I can find her color. All right, so if it's positive, it has two real solutions, two real solutions. Okay, if it's negative, it would have two complex solutions. Okay, and if it's zero, it's one solution. So that's what you have to do, x squared minus 5x plus uh, equals to zero. So we have to find b squared, that's the discriminant, right? b squared minus 4ac. So you know your B is, I guess we have to do all of them. A is one, B is negative five, C is nine, right? So we're just gonna put it in. All right, so uh, C is nine. So we just have to plug it in into this uh, number, right? B squared is nine squared, right? minus four times a, which is one, b is negative five. So nine squared is 81. Negative four times one is negative four. Negative four times negative five is positive uh, 20, right? So this is gonna give me, Oh, 4AC, sorry. Oh, I made a mistake, sorry guys. The 4AC is... Uh, where's the eraser? C is 9, so let's do it again. So B squared, B is negative. I mistaken uh, switched to B and so B squared is negative 5 squared minus 4. A is 1, C is 9. I apologize. So negative 5 squared is going to give you 25 minus 4 times 9. 4 times 9 is 36, right? Negative 4 times 1 is 4. Negative 4. Negative 4 times 6 is negative 36. So now we have 25 minus 36. That will give you negative 11. So D 
D would be negative 11, right? So yes, D would be negative 11, and this is two imaginary number, as we said here, two complex solution. All right, number eight, what is the zero of this function? X squared, so let's just go to our calculator and get it done. 14x, right? 14x equals to, so this is the one, if you guys remember, we have to do plus 48 from both sides first before we find it. But with the good thing about Desmos is um, you can just graph it. So x is 6, right? Then x, um, the other, x is 8. So what is the zero when x is six and when x is zero? So all I have to pick is this one. I don't need to minus it because they're not asking for the equation, right? They're asking where is the graph gonna be a zero? It's as when x is six and when x is eight. Number nine, what is the solution of three x squared minus eight x minus one? Uh, we can graph that, right? Because I can't factor the three out. So 3x squared plus 8x minus 1. Okay, so what's my solution? It's negative 2.786, right? So negative, negative 2.786. Then the other one is 0 0.112. So this is in a radical form, like they use the, the quadratic equation, right, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. You can do use that, or you can just, let's say, okay, we know this, but I want to know what this is, right? What is a uh, in decimal form? So we got to put it as a fraction, right? Well, so the top. The second, so the second one is negative four. And I don't need to do plus or minus, right? Let's just find the plus one first. Square root of 19, square root of 19 over three. So this is 0 0.12. Looks like it's, it matches this one, but let's see, let's see if we could find the negative of that number, right? So divided, negative four, minus, because this one says plus or minus, right? You have to do one with the plus, one with the minus. Square root of 19 over three. Oh, sorry, over three. Negative 2.786, which matches this one. So this is the correct answer. All right, number 10, what is the solution set of 5x squared plus 1 squared minus 16? The same thing, guys, just put it on Desmos. Just, you know, that's the best thing about Desmos. All right. All right, guys, so for this equation, I just put it in a graph. 5x squared plus 1, 5x plus 1 squared minus 16 equals to 0, right? Graph it. See, the solution is right here, easily given. But the solution here is given to be 0 0.6. Here, the solution is given as a fraction, right? So, I mean, you can tell if x equals to negative 1. The only one that has negative 1 is this one. But if you want to check if 3 fifth is the 0 0.6 one, just put 3 fifth as a fraction and see what decimal gives you. Or vice versa, put 0 0.6 as a decimal, right? 0 0.6 and see what fraction form of that is going to be 0 0.6, okay? I think you guys are getting it. All right, so this is, given the roots, uh, the roots of the quadratic equation are 2 thirds and 2, which of the following is the factors, right? So you can, what this is saying is, if you put this number here, would that give you 0? right? Would that be the zero of the function, right? So I, if I put this in, and which one would it be, right? Two-thirds, so 
I need to get rid of the three. So I can tell two thirds and two minus two needs to be zero. So I can tell the answer will be this one because two minus two is gonna be zero, right? So it's gonna be B or C. This is not gonna give me zero, but this is two thirds. So two, I, I need the, to, this part to be simplified. Let's say you, you can't see that, right? The way I just saw it. Okay, let's see. Let's put this number in and see which one is the zero. So I said it's either B or D is what I said, right? So let's just try B and D. So B is, uh, here it sees 2X. Oh, I, can, I can do it here. 2X minus 3. Why do I have 2, 3? Close parentheses, right? I'll put another parentheses. I have two more. Okay. Be two x minus three. I'm looking. I'm doing b x minus x minus two. Right. Both parentheses. So when I did that, so one of the solution is one point five. The other solution is positive two. One point, is it one point, one point five, right? So what's one point five? What is the fraction? It's three two, not two thirds, right? So yeah. this can't be it. I need it to be two thirds. So let's try this one, right? Which is three x, or let's go back here and change this into three x minus two minus 2 and x minus 2, right? So you see, now I can easily look at my solution 2 and then 0 0.667. So is that 2 thirds? So let's say what is 2 thirds gives you as a decimal? 2 divided by 3. 0 0.667, yeah. So you can see that number 11 is D. All right. 12 says which appear to be the solution of g of x equals to zero and what is given is it negative three is it negative one is it zero or three what do we have i have a point here and then a point here so i have a negative three and a positive one so the solution is negative three right what makes the equation zero? What makes y equals zero? Just look at the graph. All right, 13. What are the solution of x squared minus 12x plus 16? Graph it, guys. This is, you know, the same thing. Like you probably, why are we graphing everything? I mean, you can do it. You can do, you have to do the quadratic equation for this one. That's not a problem, but when it comes to tests, try to make your life a little bit easier, but we're teaching you the right way factoring it out. Because if you uh, are taking, you know, upper level math class next year, you need the skills, right? So 12x, I have too many things up there. So let's delete it, x squared minus 12x oh 12x uh, plus 16. Okay. So this is the answer 1.528 and then 10.472. So I'm going to write it down because I need to know which one is going to be. So one of them would be 10.472. And then the other one, they are both positive, right? So the other one will be 1.528. So since they are both positive, I would I would start either C or D, right? Because I they're both positive. It looks like A and, and B are going to be negative. 
So let me try if C six plus if C would work, right? Six plus two the square root of five. Ten point four seven two. Yep, yeah, that would work. Right? C would work. I don't even know C. Because if you have if you have tried the negative one, it's gonna give you a negative number. We don't have any negative solution, right? So that would be the solution. And then the other solution would be the negative of that number, right? So we can do six minus because whenever you have a, a plus or minus, one solution is the plus, the other solution is the minus. Yep. Yeah. One point five two. So that would be the solution. All right, 14. All right, which function most likely represent the graph? This is the graph. These are the equation. Graph it. All right, so all you have to do is 4x to the power of 4, right? x to the power of 4. You'd be like, how do you do a 4? You can just change the 2 into of x squared plus 27 plus 27 do they match right so this goes over negative 3 negative 3 and this is yeah and then this is one point and then this is 3 it looks like this matches but I want to see if the top one matches right oops sorry <laughs> It goes 25, right? 25. So let's see if this is 25. No, it looks a little bit uh, past it, right? So let's try the x cubed. I mean, it looks like it, but I don't know. Let's try the x cubed. x cubed. So once you put the 2 up there, go up and just change it to 3 if you don't know how to. I'm sure there's a different way of doing it, but plus oh, I've got to delete this. Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't know. All right, X Cubed. So I just did the one next to plus 12x squared minus 27. So you know that's not it, right? So I'm going to delete that one. All right. So I... Uh, so we did number three, B, so we knew that was not right, right? So now we're going to try C. So it's going to be X squared, you know, X to the power of four, right? To the power of, oh, what did I do? X to the power of four plus 10X, 10X minus five. Oh, I need to pay attention. Plus, <laughs> sorry, guys, 10x squared. x squared minus 5. And let's see the graph. x to the power of 4 plus 10x squared minus 5. <laughs> so you know it's not the same as what we just uh, so right? So the best answer is A, right? x squared minus 12x squared. So let's just, or let's do one more. That's D, which is minus 10x squared plus 27. 
27. So that's not it, right? So the best answer is A. All right. So let's do, I wanted to switch this around so that you can, it's easier for me to see it. So that was number, what was that number? Number 14, okay, so let's do number 15. So oh, 15 actually, you don't need the decimals, right? So 15 is asking you, uh, oh, we do. Which graph best represent the function to x squared? So I need Desmos. Sorry, so Desmos is here. And then they gave me the equation on top, right? So I'll just write negative 2x squared. So the negative kind of need to give you a, a headway, like you know the graph is going to be upside down, right? Plus 11x minus 12, right? So it went to the right, so I'm going to look at it. It's not A, it's not B, looks like C. Let's see what D is. D is on top, yep. So it has to be C, right? It matches it. All right, next. 16, what is the domain of the graph? You guys should remember this. We did this. So domain goes all the way the x-axis, right? I'm looking at the x. So it goes to positive infinity, but for the uh, this side, I don't think it crosses past the negative 4. So x has to be greater than negative 4. All right, 17. It says through which interval of the following interval only decreasing? So go ahead, graph it first, because it's, I don't know where it's, it's decreasing, right? Let's graph it. X minus one, close parentheses, X minus four, open parentheses, X minus four, squared right so i want to know where it's decreasing only right so when i see this graph it's going up down up so it decreases from positive two right it's all the way to positive four positive two all the way to positive four all right 18 a cubic function has turning point at one negative one two one negative two which could be the graph turning point negative one uh two is here right that's not a turning point right negative one two negative one two looks like this okay this is a turning point and then the other one is what what was the other point you should see this. The other one is one negative two. One negative two. One negative two. It looks like this, B. But I want to try C. So C is one negative. So that's not it, right? The second one is negative two. I need it to be negative two, so that's not it. So yeah, I got one negative two. That's a turning point. And then the other one is one, negative one, two. So D might be negative one. Yep, D might be the solution. Yep, good job. So 19, it's one solution, one real solution. You have to pick the one that bounced. So which is C, right? Remember this with Mr. K? All right, the last one is where does the graph of the function cross the x-axis? Go ahead and use Desmos. So let's, um, I feel like I'm rushing you towards the end. All right, let's do this. All right, open up and see x plus one, x plus one, close from C's, x minus, two 
I thought I saw a cross, but no. Okay, that's fine. So here we go. Crosses, that's the graph of function, crosses the x-axis. So it's crossing the x-axis at crosses the x-axis at negative 1, 0, right? And then positive to 0. See? Negative 1, 0, positive to 0. See? Okay? So this is it, guys. Uh, you know, after you watch this, you understand everything. Make sure you take your test. And uh, see you guys on Wednesday.